Hello, everybody. Roger says hey. Scarlet says hey, too. Wanna say hi, Scarlet? There you go. Say hi, Scarlet. Say hi to everybody. Look at the camera. Scarlet's a sweet girl. Yes. All right, guys. Well, today we're going to be doing a video on the Unknown Warrior. Now, I don't know if this is any different from the Unknown Soldier that you guys have over in the UK. I don't know if they're the same thing or if they're two different things. Okay, Scarlet's gone. But I had a couple of comments on my Festival of Remembrance video that I did back in November. One is from Marcusi. Uh, Marcusi asked, can you do a reaction to this video, the story of Britain's Unknown Warrior? I feel like you'd enjoy it. Then we have this one from Nomans, which is the exact same video. This is quite a good watch, the story of the unknown warrior, a bit like the unknown soldier. So that makes me question. I don't know if you guys have both like the unknown warrior and the unknown soldier. I guess I will find out in this video. Now we do have an unknown soldier over here in the US as well. We have the tomb of the unknown soldier in Washington DC and it actually has four graves in it. Uh, each representing kind of the major wars in American history since World War One. And I believe that one is modeled after the British version. The British version came first, I'm pretty sure. So now this video we're watching today is from the bands of the HM Royal Marines. So they're going to be the ones telling the story and it looks like there's going to be kind of a ceremony going on at the same time from the Royal Albert Hall. This is from the Mountbatten Festival of Music in 2021. And just from a brief scrub through, it looks like they're going to make that drum altar that we saw in the Festival of Remembrance as well. So at least I'll have some idea about what's going on with that since I saw it in the Festival of Remembrance. You guys kind of let me know what that was about. Anyway, I love watching stuff like this. A little bit of history, a little bit of ceremony mixed together. So, so let's take a look at the uh, Unknown Warrior story. By the end of the Great War, the human cost meant that nearly every family from around the British Empire had suffered losses. Many of the fallen remained unidentified, resting in war graves far from home. One man's determination to honor these brave men led to the story of the Unknown Warrior. It's very dramatic music. <laughs> Another reminder of the cost so poignantly brought home to us all as king and people unite in paying tribute to an unknown British warrior. This kind of sounds like it's going to be the same thing as the unknown soldier. So I don't know if you guys just call it the warrior in the UK and we call it the soldier here in the US. I thought you guys called it the unknown soldier too, but maybe not. In 1916, Reverend David Railton, while serving as an army chaplain on the Western Front, had seen a small wooden cross marking a grave with the words, an unknown British soldier. He later wrote, how that grave caused me to think. I thought and thought, what can I do to ease the pain of father, mother, brother, sister, sweetheart, wife and friend? Quietly and gradually, there came out of the mist of thought this answer, clear and strong. Let this body, this symbol of him, be carried over the sea to his native land. Hmm. After writing to the Dean of Westminster, Herbert Ryle, in 1920, he proposed that a British soldier known only to God be laid to rest in Westminster Abbey amongst the kings. This was to represent mm. the many thousands that never returned. The proposal was met with enthusiasm, and so began the journey of bringing this unknown warrior back where he belonged, back home.
On the evening of the 7th of November, 1920, the remains of four unidentified soldiers, one from each of the four main battlefields, were placed in the chapel at Saint-Paul-sur-Ternoise, near Arras in France. Brigadier Wyatt and Lieutenant Colonel Gell of the Directorate of Graves Registration and Inquiries entered the chapel alone. The four coffins were draped in Union flags and indistinguishable from each other. With eyes closed, Brigadier Wyatt rested his hand on one of the coffins. The selection of the unknown warrior was made. I think the U.S. just pretty much just copied this because this is pretty much how the story of the U.S. Unknown Soldier goes as well, down to like picking one of four coffins, you know. So this is uh, this is really interesting. Coffin stayed at the chapel overnight, and on the afternoon of the 8th of November, it was transferred to the medieval castle within the ancient citadel at Boulogne. A Légion d'honneur en masse kept a vigil overnight. The following morning, the coffin was placed in a casket of oak timbers of trees from the grounds of Hampton Court Palace and placed onto a French military wagon. At 10.30 a.m., all the church bells of Boulogne tolled, and the mile-long procession led by 1,000 local schoolchildren, escorted by a division of French troops, made a solemn march to the harbor. It's pretty cool that the French were involved in this too. music. <laughs> The song is, by the way. Shall At the quayside, Marshal Foch saluted the casket before it was carried up the gangway of the British destroyer HMS Verdun. Just before noon, HMS Verdun slipped anchor and, with an escort of six battleships from the Atlantic fleet, crossed the English Channel to Dover. Getting dramatic here.
precious cargo arrived at Admiralty Pier, Dover, to a 19-gun salute fired from Dover Castle. It was placed in utility van number 132, and at 5.50 p.m. on the 10th of November, it began its three-hour train journey to Victoria Station. They um, reenacted some of this stuff. It's pretty cool. Arriving at Platform 8 at 8.32 p.m. and now regarded as a national symbol, the representative of the thousands who made the ultimate sacrifice, the unknown warrior, was greeted by a guard of honor and a large, silently respectful crowd. Hmm. A plaque marks the site, and every year on the 10th of November, a small remembrance service organized by the Western Front Association takes place between platforms 8 and 9 wow. to honor and pay respects to this most significant of arrivals. Wow, that's, that's cool. It was expecting there that. overnight under escort until interment at Westminster Abbey the following day. On the morning of the 11th of November, the coffin was placed on a gun carriage drawn by six black horses from the Royal Horse Artillery. Huge crowds had gathered as the carriage traveled between lines of troops, their heads bowed and rifles reversed for the short journey from Victoria Station to Westminster Abbey. No, I kind of like that that respectful stance of the soldiers that he just described with the rifles reversed and kind of bowed head. It it looks cool and it also looks respectful at the same time. So I really like that. So I guess this would have been uh, Remembrance Day uh, 1920. Was this the first Remembrance Day? Thousands came to pay their respects, lining the route as the carriage drew past, heading towards the Cenotaph, a hugely symbolic national shrine commemorating the 1.1 million British and Empire dead of the First World War and celebrating its centennial year. Representing an empty tomb, it immediately caught the public imagination, becoming a powerful focus for the grief of a nation and to honor the fallen the glorious dead. Over a million people visited in the first week, and wow. as Big Ben chimed 11 o'clock, a two-minute silence fell throughout the capital, throughout the land, across the empire, and on the seas, before the cenotaph was unveiled after the haunting notes of the last post rang out. Mm.
After the unveiling, the king placed his wreath of red roses and bay leaves on the coffin. His card read, in proud memory of those warriors who died unknown in the great war, unknown and yet well known, as dying, and behold, they live. Who was the king at this time? The cortege comprising the escorting pallbearers and followed by the king, the royal family and ministers of state continued to Westminster Abbey. Arriving at the north door of the abbey, it was flanked by a guard of honor of 100 recipients of the nation's highest military honor, the Victoria Cross. congregation settled and the choir sang. 100 women selected from the 15,000 who had lost a husband and one or more sons, bereft with emotion, took their place and as the dean began to conduct the service, cries of mourning echoed around the abbey. The procession made its way to the grave, carefully removing the wreath, sidearms and helmet and the union flag and lowered the coffin into the grave. After the Lord's Prayer, the hymn, Abide With Me, was sung with spirit and heartfelt emotion as the burial service came to a close. Servicemen from the armed forces stood guard as tens of thousands of mourners on a scale never seen before filed silently past the unknown warrior to pay their respects. The identity of the unknown warrior will rightly never be known. He represents the son of every mother, the husband of every wife, the brother of every sister, killed in the great war and every war. Those whose loved ones were amongst the unknown know that in this tomb there may be, there is, resting the body of their beloved, and with it brings the hope and joy of many thousands, knowing that this body, this symbol of him, will always be remembered then, now, and forevermore as the unknown warrior is finally home.
I apologize if I was too quiet during that reaction for you guys, but I just felt like it would be disrespectful to stop the video too much and talk or ask questions or, you know, and I was just kind of captivated, caught up in the story anyway, in the presentation. So I just kind of wanted to let it play through as much as possible. It's a very, very touching story for sure. All the way from, I forgot what his name was, but the uh, soldier who in night or the chaplain, sorry, in 1916 that was inspired to kind of start this by seeing that kind of unmarked grave in France. And then it was great how the French people kind of got involved with it as well and paid their respects. And then just seeing the ceremony of it traveling across the channel from France back to Britain, you know, how it stayed in the train car overnight and all of the different steps that it went through um, being given the Victoria Cross, of which by the way, I need to watch a video on that as well. One thing that struck me was that it was put in Westminster Abbey amongst the Kings. Like that really st stuck out to me. And that just shows, I guess, I mean, I don't actually know, is Westminster Abbey where the, the royalty basically is buried? Buried. I'm assuming so based on that statement. To me, that, that shows just how much the British people value the unknown soldier that they would place him amongst kings. And I think also just hearing about the raw emotion of the people that were there at the ceremony. These are people that had a lot of family members who lost their lives and were only a couple of years out from the end of the war, maybe a year. The, the emotion is still very, very raw. And so that just adds this whole other element to it as well. And then seeing the kind of the, the reenactment of it, the way they did that, and then just the presentation that the Royal Marines put on here with a drum altar and everything. Yeah, it was just a really, really beautifully, beautifully told story the way they did it. So I'm glad I watched this. It does have similarities with the American Unknown Soldier, but there are also a lot of differences as well. So I do think it would be cool to kind of like do a video on the American one, not to compare or anything, but just to kind of like, it would be fun to, to do it. I think a lot of countries around the world actually have an unknown soldier soldier tomb or memorial of some sort. So I think it might be kind of cool to see how different countries pay respects to their unknown soldiers. So there you go. Appreciate you guys suggesting this video for me. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet. We'll be doing more videos like this in the future. So I actually have more videos over on Patreon where I do longer form content like documentaries on the world wars, British sitcoms, like all of that stuff I do over on Patreon because I can't do that over here on YouTube. So if you're interested in checking that out, you'll see my Patreon link in the description and pinned comment of this video. I also have my social media and Discord links there as well if you're interested in that. And I have a Star Trek podcast for all you Trekkies out there. The links are also in the description and pinned comment. So Roger Scarlet and I thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more videos like this coming up in the near future on my channel and we'll see you guys next time.